What's going on guys? Dandy here from Metal Couch, rounding out my Iron Maiden discography tonight. Uh, I'm going to go on ahead and just do the final three albums released by the band in one video, mostly because with Dance of Death and A Matter of Life and Death, I don't really think I could fit um, each one of those into their own video discussing it. Um, I, I just really can't generate enough topics about either one of those albums to kind of warrant their own separate videos. But going into Dance of Death, this is a very strange album, not due to the fact of what's on the album, but more fan reception. From other fans of the band that um, I happen to be acquainted with, uh, they don't speak too fondly of Dance of Death. And Dance of Death to me is one of those things where you got tracks that are really, really, really good, and then you have tracks that are just flat out boring. For example, I really, really like No More Lies, Rainmaker, uh, Passchendaele is probably, is not even probably, it is one of my favorite Iron Maiden songs. Then you have stuff like Age of Innocence, which I really, it's a mixed bag with Dance of Death. That's how I feel about it. Um, you pretty, and the, the artwork on the cover is probably, the worst piece of album art I've probably ever seen on an album. Uh, but then again, nobody needs to hear me running that into the ground because it's already been ran into the ground enough by other people. A Matter of Life and Death is I, something that I hear from fans is highly regarded with them. Um, having only listened to A Matter of Life and Death twice, I still don't see it. Um, there are certain songs on here that I do enjoy. Um, I thought Different World was a good song. I thought uh, uh, Lord of Light, The Legacy, um, Brighter Than a Thousand Suns. I mean, there are good tracks on this album. But I think that when you get into the later Iron Maiden albums and the fact that most of them clock in at well over an hour, you get to this point where it's like, all right, please finish already. And I know there's going to be fans out there who, like, I really like the long songs from Maiden. I don't really like the whole three, four minute long songs that you get, and that's fine. I mean, it's just that there are some songs on here that go on way too longer than they need to be. Uh, for example, I don't really like the reincarnation of Benjamin Brieg. Um, I do not like For the Greater Good of God, and uh, The Pilgrim, you know, I kind of, I'm kind of mixed on that. These Colors Don't Run, I'm kind of mixed on that one too. But this is all leading up to something a little bit different. The Final Frontier was one of the first albums I ever reviewed on this channel when it came out in 2010. Was it 2000? I think it was, yeah, 2010. It would have had to have been. And I thought that this album was a great mix between what you had and kind of the Somewhere in Time, Seventh Son era, of Maiden, a little bit of Power Slave thrown in there too, but then again you also have the sound and the quality from the past couple of albums like uh, Brave New World, Dance of Death, A Matter of Life and Death. So you get a really mixed bag. There's something on the final frontier for all Maiden fans who like the old material or the new material. It's a perfect mixed bag and the final frontier is one of Maiden's best albums. And when I first reviewed this album, I spoke very highly of it. And two years later, there are certain songs that I keep in rotation, such as Starblind, Isle of Avalon. Uh, I don't really... Be, and uh, The Man Who Would Be King is another one I keep in rotation. But um, El Dorado, I never really liked El Dorado that much, even when it was released as a single. I did like The Final Frontier, even though it sounds reminiscent of uh, Judas, like the guitar riff as a guitarist, it's very similar to uh, Judas Priest's cover of the Green Manalishi with a two-pronged crown from uh, from Killing Machine. So, I, I don't know. Fun fact, I guess. I'm, I'm trailing off topic. The Final Frontier is a great album. It's probably what I, it, it's what I like to see the most from Maiden. And I still highly regard this album as one of the top three Maiden albums out there in my book. Uh, I really enjoy that album. And with Iron Maiden, you, you know, getting up there in age, um, 
really, they still have so much more that they could do. Uh, I did put out a review a while back of Steve Harris's solo album, which I was not too fond of. I didn't really think too positively of that. But then again, going into that, I was trying to keep Maiden out of my mind. And without even incorporating Iron Maiden into it, it just really wasn't that good of an album. And really, Maiden have, I think it was... It was either Bruce or uh, Nico came out and they said that, you know, they just can't really play their songs as fast as they could. You know, they're getting up there in age, and I, I fully understand that. Rush has come out and said that they're going to retire soon. So a lot of bands that I consider to be my heroes are starting to retire, and we really don't have anything out there to take their place. So, But then again, that's kind of a good thing. Iron Maiden are late legends in their own domain. In the hierarchy of metal, they're pretty far up there. I kind of like to think of them as like an ambassador of metal, since they like to go around the world a lot and play in countries no one else has ever played at. I mean, they're probably one of those bands that's played in almost every country on the planet. And with that, Iron Maiden will go down a legend as a fantastic band, and I hope that, you know, 50 years from now, that there will still be people listening to their material because that's just how good it is. The legacy of Maiden, I hope, will survive for decades to come. Maiden is a fantastic band, one of the bands that influenced me the most as a musician. And they even influenced me, uh, you know, doing other things, too. I love listening to their music. Their music makes me feel good. And I just, I hope that one day I will be able to see Iron Maiden before they retire. That's one of the things that... I'm trying so hard to do, but it's very difficult as I mean, their tickets are expensive and they just don't really like touring the U.S. that often. And I fully understand why, considering the United States just wants to hear old material. I'm not one of those people. I really do like when a band tours, I like to hear their new material. Um, Megadeth, I'm talking to you. Please play a lot more new material when you go out on tour. So with that being said... Iron Maiden, Metal Legends, and I hope that their legacy never dies. Danny here from Metal Couch, signing off.